So what should you pay yourself in your landscaping business? That's what I wanna talk about in this video and break it down right now. What's up, I'm Keith Kelfis, and on this channel we talk about how to go from zero, if you're just getting started, up to 100,000 in your landscaping business. And I've seen the question so many times and not enough people answering it. And in my comments, what should you pay yourself in your landscaping business? And although there's not a definite answer, I'm gonna break down as much as I've learned so far because I've asked this question myself a ton of times. And so let's get into it. Whether you're a single member LLC or a sole proprietor or you have an S Corp, however you structure your business has a lot to do with this as well. And I won't get too much into uh, LLCs and pass through income because I can't advise you in anything on how you structure your business. I have an S Corp and I'm a 100% shareholder of my business, right? That's just the legal entity. And then I have personal income as well. So what I mean is I'm actually on payroll and you should be on payroll in your business, like a legit payroll where you're paying taxes and, and you're paying into the social security system and all the other little taxes that go with it, all that expensive stuff. Now, the rules of everything I've learned and I'm not advising you that if you are an LLC, go seek your own advice, I don't know what state you're in, is that you can like literally just put everything through one bank account and at the end of the year when you run your taxes, you could just divvy it all up and pay your fair share of taxes. Now, I wouldn't really, I don't even think that's a smart path to go, even though some people do that when they're just getting started. Or if you're a sole proprietor, same thing, you're running everything off your social security number, but when you get an actual corporation, like an S Corp, or you, you file your taxes as an S Corp, you can learn all about this in the book, Own Your Own Corporation by uh, Garrett Sutton, and he's part of Robert Kiyosaki's advisors, and you can even listen to it on audible.com. There's a ton of, of stuff about this, and then figure out what's best for you. I think you should go hire a CPA and get it all structured. And this is all important. What should you pay yourself, right? So from all the questions that I've asked, I've learned that you should pay yourself a legit payroll, something reasonable, as the business owner, once the business is, is established, what is a reasonable salary? That is the literally the quotes here. And I'm not making this up. What is a reasonable salary? Well, here's some, one thing that you could do. You could create your, your business uh, expenses. We'll just call it BE and then your personal expenses, PE. And some of your personal expenses will actually turn into business expenses as you get going, like your vehicle and your phone and a, and a portion of that thereof, or if you convert your personal line to a business line, then you go get your own personal line, which that means you have two phones, you have a dedicated business line, do you have a home office? All these things come into play when you ask yourself that question. But just first to simplify it, figure out what all of your home expenses are. I don't know, let's say you got 1500 a month for your house or for rent. And then you got a thousand bucks a month in food. And then you've got, you know, gas, phone, electric, internet, health insurance, having fun. And you figure all this out and you figure out that it costs you, let's say, uh, let's just be very simple here. Let's say it costs you 4,000 bucks a month to live then your personal expenses, basically, you should pay yourself a grand a week on payroll. On actual legitimate payroll as a salary, you're paying yourself either bi-weekly 2,000 every other week, 2,000 every other week, getting direct deposited into your account through some type of payroll system. You can run it yourself on QuickBooks. I'll put a link in the description below. You can get a discount on QuickBooks. Or if you go through a payroll company like actual ADP, which is what I use because ADP had, handles all the quarterly filings. They do everything for you. And trust me, if you're trying to do it all yourself, if you don't have an office manager or somebody who is experienced in that, uh, it can be very frustrating. I tried to do it all myself before and it's like, Phew. and you can also get yourself in hot water if you incorrectly file things and just the fees, it's just not worth it. So I use ADP. Aside from all this, I know of plenty of business owners, like between you and I, I'm not telling you that you should do this, but I know plenty of business owners that are like have, pretty big businesses and they're paying themselves like 500 a week, 
300 bucks a week. And some people don't pay themselves any payroll at all and they say that the business just shows a loss. Like, uh, I don't know how long that, or how sustainable that is, but here's what the rule of the reasonable salary is when it came all the way down to the line, when you could quote unquote get in trouble for, remember, I'm not qualified to talk about this. I'm just giving my opinions based on what I've researched. So don't take my word as law, but it's kind of like the 51% thing that, uh, so I'll just right here, 51% of what you pay yourself should be in the form of a legit payroll. So all the taxes and everything out is being, so you're paying your fair share of taxes, right? Now the other 49% can be in the form of distributions, right? Now I might even be wrong with that. It could be a 60, 40, a 70, 30, but this is the safe margin from all the business owners I've talked to that taking distributions is like you literally take money out of the business account and you transfer it into your personal account. Whether you do a thousand bucks a week, at the end of the quarter, you quarter, you give yourself a $5,000 bonus or at the end of the year, after you pay all your taxes, you transfer $20,000 into your personal account or you go on a vacation. I don't know what, what you're doing, but all of that income that's not getting used up and counted as actual cogs and overhead, like cost of goods sold and overhead that are like legitimate tax write-offs and things that you prove in that paper trail where that money went. Where did that money go? You're showing that to the state, the feds, the IRS and all that, and you're actually, uh, you have a legitimate write-offs. And then what's left over after everything is your personal profit of what you actually pay taxes on. So if you do 300,000 in your business, 300K, and you legit have, I don't know, let's say you have $220,000 in expenses right then you make eighty thousand dollars in profit you got to pay taxes on eighty thousand dollars so if you have a, just a single member llc and you've made eighty thousand dollars in personal income and at the end of the year you're paying a full personal income tax penalties as pass-through income on that that means whatever the tax rate is if it's um it go up 22 and a half percent it goes up so it's it it doesn't jump up like from uh, i don't know what the tax rate is right now let's just say from like 18 percent to 22 to 30 to 40 it's on a gradient so every penny or every thousand dollars you make over a certain amount it goes up on a gradient. So everything past $42,000 or everything past $65,000. Don't quote me on the exact numbers, but so you're not just gonna get hit with some monster tax bill, it goes on a gradient. You can look more into that, I won't talk about that here. But what I mean is, do you wanna pay these personal, uh, have a liability to pay $80,000 in personal taxes, or do you wanna pay and payroll. So uh, what I do in my business is I make sure that most of all, most of my personal income is getting eaten up in payroll. So you should pay yourself on an actual payroll and then you have distributions. And the cool thing about having your own small business like Robert Kiyosaki talks about in the ESBI, if you read Robert Kiyosaki's book, The Cashflow Quadrant, he talks about the ESBI. This is like life-changing, should listen to it, and all of his books. Employee, self-employed, B-type business owner, and I-type investor. If you go into taxes and the book Save on Taxes Big Time, it will basically employees have to, they can only operate after with after-tax dollars. So everything gets taxed directly out of the paycheck and then whatever is left over, they can spend. When you move into the small business or BI quadrant, you're operating with pre-tax dollars. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm learning and I actually, I have two businesses and stuff that I do that's totally legit, but I can save a bunch of money on taxes and so can you by learning about this stuff is that you spend pre-tax dollars. So very, very important. You literally can go buy a $60,000 truck. You can buy uh, mowers and equipment and weed whip and, and stuff and com computers and cameras and all the way down to 
the apparel that you wear. There's so much stuff that you can do. So at the end of the year, let's just say it's like a week, it's Christmas week and it's about to be the new year. If you got a whole bunch of cash sitting in your account and tons of account receivables and money flowing in, and you're gonna have all this excess money, if there's something that you want to invest in, it's Christmas. Buy yourself a Christmas present and go out and go buy and purchase some tools for your business and get the receipt for that. Make sure it's tracked in your business bank account. And now all of a sudden you have a legit tax write-offs because you needed this thing for your business, right? So that's a, a perfect thing to do to minimize your tax liability. I literally have friends that are going out and spending like, I gotta go blow a hundred grand in 48 hours. <laughs> and they have to go do that and they go and expand their business and do things like that and so get that working in your head right there so where are you at employee self-employed just totally different on the left side of the quadrant here i'm talking about you're both in your business as a as a when you file taxes as an S Corp as a 100% shareholder of your business, you have to pay yourself a reasonable salary. You become an employee of your business, but you also own the business. So you pay yourself a reasonable salary, 500 bucks a week, a thousand bucks a week, whatever your personal, the minimum amount of your personal expenses are, your home, you're going out to eat, um, the fun stuff that you do, all personal stuff is under payroll, and then all business stuff, is under business and then whatever is left over you can pay yourself as a shareholder through dis distributions but you still got to pay taxes on that right so it's kind of like if you're paying taxes throughout the year on payroll and you're also sending in estimated quarterly tax payments as well by the time it comes tax time you would you barely you might you you can do three hundred thousand dollars in your business and literally end up owing just a couple grand in taxes and if you were saving the entire time instead of blowing all the money based off the 30 percent rule i'll put a link in the description below to that video i did saving 30 percent of all gross revenue that comes in by the time tax time comes you might have twenty five thousand dollars I don't know how much it is. You could be 10 grand or sitting in your account, but because you're so proactive, you're paying yourself a reasonable salary. You're setting aside money and you're working your tail off. Now, when it comes time for taxes and you pay all that off, you only owe a few grand, right? Now you have all this money left over. That's still going to count as income though, right? So what are you going to do? You're going to invest some of this. It's like left over in the Dude, this could be a long video because I can get into the bank accounts and all that, but I'm just gonna stick with here what you should pay yourself and it's a reasonable salary. What do you pay yourself or what percentage do you pay yourself? Let me know in the comments below. And um, I've done extensive research on this because I wanna be safe and pay myself the right amount. And um, there you go. I'll see you in the next video.